He's just soaked. He's just so soaked. Okay, we still have our guy in there anyway, so not a big deal. So let me get a new apron on him real quickly. Okay. Should put the cap on top first. Okay. Oh well. Here it goes. He got a new little bib now. Ah. <laughs> okay, let's tap him first. Like I said again, he's might got three more rounds to go really for this guy here. He's gonna empty himself out. All right, I guess repetition is the mother of skill, right? We have to probably spend 10,000 hours in order to master how to break your bleeder. <laughs> I'll probably die by then, but we'll find out. It's either him or us. Okay, let's do this. Right, let's just get a little bit better. Now that we know the strip part, it's more towards the back, so we have to pull this guy forward. I'm watching here through the peephole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten. One, two, three, four. All right, that's it. That's it. All right, guys, this is it. Ooh, oh, it burns. It's like a, we call that a Zumba, whatever. Oh, man, look at that. Still not the best, to be honest with you. But then again, it's actually at the highest point, too. So let's see how this guy did. This guy's a little bit more stiffer. But he will break, though. But it's gonna not be that strong. See, I can almost force them all the way down. See that? I have to force them though. See, we have some more in him anyway. All right, let's just keep tapping him until we really get him down to where we want him. He's gonna come one way or the other. I know I said this is it, but you know me. It's gotta be the best that we can make it. Oh, even though it's, it's a doozy. All right. All right, guy. You gonna give me a break or what? I know you're leaking somewhere too, but come on, do me a favor. Give us a break. Weird, huh? It's like a how to go back here in order to get to the forward.
All right, that's it. That is really it. This guy just, that's it. I'm tightening him already down as much as I can now. Let's just see the clean side here. A little follow through test. See if I can get any. See, it doesn't seem like it. So the bonjo bolt might be okay. I think maybe our really challenges. Again, it's just so hard to tell. You know? Might be this guy here. All right, we'll just give it a rest for a second. What I'll do is I'll even tighten this down. I just want to go ahead and have this smack in now. The reason why I feel that way is um, in case if someone else smacks it in and we don't actually tighten this bolt and then someone moves this, you know, whatever, maybe hit a bump or something, it's probably going to cause a little bit more vacuum leak. So now that I know that this is as far as it can go tighten, I know when I, when I tighten it, I'm not going to be able to do this anymore. I won't be able to put my sheet like this anymore. Because what it's going to do is going to snap into that guy, which is fine because we're finally calling it, calling it, 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 okay? So here we go. So I'm just going to go and tighten it down. There we go. That's it. Lock it in. Lock and load. Now I don't want to tighten it further because then they'll wedge this guy out again. Then we're gonna have the same problem here again. You remember last time, so it's just enough there for it to have its support backing, but not so much because if it's forcefully backing, then it's gonna gap in this guy up again. It's gonna wedge this guy up like this because he needs to be able to squeeze, squeeze and fit through here again. So we don't want that either. So this is it. This is it. This is it. All right. What was that? Another hour and a half to spend on breaking the uh, hose line. <laughs> There's just no way around it. I mean, <laughs> bleeding it. All right, so here we go. Let's see how what's the reserve levels like. It's still halfway, see, because I didn't really have to use that much. But let's show you how tight this guy is. Oh, what did I do that for? Okay, that was that was fun. Okay, here we go. So there you go. I mean, I can really squeeze and forcefully. Actually, no. Maybe because I'm out of energy now. <laughs> but anyway, it's good enough. I, I mean, this is has this really strong grip. This guy here, he's building himself. So unless that, like I said, that brake line's you know gone. There. All right. Well, let's go and set this guy back up, and let's kind of tap him to a level where. You again, you don't want to tap him overflow because you need to make sure that that rubber boot sticks out a centimeter inside of him. So it, it doesn't push any fluid back out. But you can see where he's at right now. He's at the halfway circle mark, which he, we have plenty of room to tap some more in for him. So this is it. This is the tap that's going to... Look at that. See some of the old brake fluid pumped that self out? It took a while, huh? But you guys saw a little bit of difference in pumping it. Yeah, it's no fun at all. I can't say this is like the most pleasurable moment I ever have. <laughs> this part, maybe. The final tap, yeah. All right, so that's it. See, you, got, you want to leave a centimeter, just go a little bit above the, the circle, and that's it. See, this is really where you want. Maybe, I think that's fine. So when it spins this way, see that? You want to just go above that little circle rim, and that's it. That's going to be your guy there. And let's go ahead and clean up his counterparts. Well, this guy needs to be cleaned too, so. All right, so this is it. We finally did it. I'm going to throw away this cardboard and burn it. I'm going to put it in the recycling bin. Even though it has a little bit of brake fluid, I think a little bit won't kill it. Uh, so. All right, so let's clean up. So first of all, let's clean this guy up. We're going to seal him. Now you can see all the fun of doing your brake fluid, huh? I hope I didn't scare you guys from doing it yourself. Let me know if you have a better suggestion how to better brake it. Um, 
I don't know. We got new parts of everything. Brake assembly, new bonjo bolts, uh, new brake bleeder assembly, or brake bleeder with assembly with the whole brake, you know, setup. But however, whatever it is, it's still, we just keep this part dry and then inside here. Or what, what's going to happen is, be honest with you, I don't even have the energy to troubleshoot the remote starter now today. This is it. <laughs> that was just my energy there, wasted on siphoning, pumping, and trying to figure out what the heck. All right, so. And then we'll monitor too, you know, after a while of usage, we're going to see if we still have, you know, brake line. Um, you know, I'll do it before I even close the housing. I guess definitely want to do it. Uh, to see, you know, what's the deal here? Where is it leaking from? We'll fight, forgot. <sighs> Just want to clean this guy really dry because he doesn't need to be wet. The reason why is when this guy sits on him, he doesn't need to be, this top part needs not to be wet. Only the bottom part here because it's where it's facing the brake line. I mean, fa facing the, the brakes fluid. This one doesn't need to face the brake fluid, so that should be dry. I'm just gonna dry them all at once. It's hard to just dry one side, really. Just get a damp, you know, shop rag and just kind of press on it. Be careful. Don't want to stretch or anything like that because they will rip. It has really thin skin in between the its little maze there. You see there. So this one's on the outside. You can tell because this groove right here digs into this guy here. See that? So you just want to maybe just get your cloth there and just kind of dry them up. There's no need for fluid to stay in there, though. It wicks the moisture sort of away, I guess. It has a little mechanism to do that. I don't know how that all works. And all I know, this part should be kept dry. When you open it first time, you'll see water vapors in here. And you might want to just, you know, clean it up. Brake fluid is itchy because it gets underneath your skin sometimes and does all kinds of irritation. So you want to wash your hand thoroughly with soap. Um... Perhaps, I'm not sure, hot water because that opens your pores more. So you might want to first wash it with cold water. I know the first thing you want to do is get hot water, open the pores and get it all out, right? But that might open your bloodstream to accept, you know, brake fluid in there directly. So you don't want to do that. You might want to rinse off with cold water and soap on the surface, get it all out most you can. And then maybe chase it back with some hot water. You definitely, for your own instrument here, you can get hot water. It doesn't really matter. And clean your scooter part, but for this part... I like to blow on it just to make sure I don't get any lint from the cloth. I got done back. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, I'm not sure if you guys caught me while I said there. Hold this down though, and you don't want to angle in the way where it's going to create a vacuum to suck all your, you know, your fuel lines out. So let's check our fuel line level to make sure it's okay. All right, so it's still okay. All right, so anyway, bring it back. You want to make sure it doesn't touch the rim. Uh, you don't have to do that. You know, I just like to do it because I want to suck out all these little brake fluid inside the little, you know, what I mean, the studs. So eventually it'll probably dry out and do whatever it needs to do. But I just didn't like to have it hanging out there if it doesn't need to be. So before I do anything around this area, it's time to go ahead and bolt the, our master cylinder cap because, then, you know, I do need to get these guys off of here. Uh, I'm going to get a warm cloth right after this because you don't want brake fluid to stay in your plastic too long again. So let's do this. Let's bolt this guy on. So we can call him a day and then we'll give him a final pump again just to make sure everything is settled in. Now there's a, there's gonna, it's gonna have to wait for another day. I am exhausted now from this guy's battle. Oh man, it's like, I don't know how doctors do it when they go into surgery. They do it for 16 hour surgery. I got, I mean, not just the money itself, but the passion to be able to save a human life depends on, you know, precision. And you know, delicate, delicate hands, precision, delicate hands. So anyway, uh, not saying changing your brake cable should be that much rocket science, really. Just building back pressure in the hose and pushing out the air. That's all basically is. Uh, fluids more solid than air. All right, so I can almost tighten it by hand, but I don't want to. I want to case it back with the ratchet as well. But I want to push this guy again for at least make me happy what we accomplished. Hopefully this never strips. If this strips, there's another problem. <laughs> all right, this is Michael. We got done uh, pretty much uh, doing a dry cleanup of all our brake assembly and everything like that. You can see here, I put a cap back on there. What I'm going to do is go over it. I did actually um, hit it with the, the shop back. You can see here, it squirted out everything it forcefully. <laughs> This is pushing out air. So what you do is you go in here, you'll see it squeeze out. 
Still more coming out, so I'll get this and I'll wipe it down. Also, I was able to get some off of here as well. Whoa! Gotta go like this. Just trying to get it all around. I noticed on the Bonjo bolt though, when I did it, it was kind of like squeezing it sort of. Hopefully, but not this guy here who's in the way sort of. You see the Bonjo bolt here. But there's no more. Um, so I'm going to do is fold this guy up and throw him away. But before I do that, I'm going to go and get some hot water and actually give this guy warm, a warm rub down. So here we go. Here we go. There we go. Here we go, it's nice and warm now. So what we're gonna do is gonna rub down off the plastic, especially these areas here. Get all. Perfect, this is it. Perfect, there we go. Got everything here, we want it. Nice. All right, so let's go and work in all the areas there that brake fluid might come to contact with. Especially these guys there. They're not too bad because they're mostly just aluminum parts or not the plastic parts. But we just don't want brake fluid to eat up anything that comes in contact with, especially a rubber. Even though they're made to tolerate it more, but still just want to make sure wipe it down. Keep it things prolonged. I did clean this guy up a little bit. He was probably dirty for whatever reason. See here the caliper, the pistons. So I couldn't get all of them out there. Still, little, see some of that little black stuff right there. I try to pick them with a what do you call that? A little tie strap here. Let's see here. There we go. So I got this guy here. I picked on him a little bit. I sprayed some brake parts cleaner as well, just to try to you know break them out a little bit. Things like that you can do once you're sort of done with your work. It's not just for cosmetic, but for wear and tear. So anyway, he's not really coming off too much. So, but either way, we did a pretty good job still. Just the matter is make sure that the brake caliper is tight enough, no air leak, and we'll just monitor it. You know, it's really hard to tell uh, where that uh, line's coming from, but over time, I think we'll start feeling it uh, where it's actually leaking from. So here we go.
Awesome, there we go. I think we got everything we wanted out. See, this is a little bit what brake fluid does. Kind of makes plastic, kind of see that? A little right wear. That's what we don't want. Yeah, but we're ready to go ahead and clean it up now. I think this is done. I think that we could have got all that we could have. Now it's time. You know, you want to use a, you know, a nice warm cloth to get all the little residue of brake fluid out. Well, I'm glad we didn't have to remove this guy. That's one less obstacle, so I'm really thrilled by that. So here we go. Awesome, so we got that there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start unraveling this and everything and um, guess from here on, I might even do this. Remember what uh, APM said about how he can actually get the throttle sleeve off? Let's try it. Even though I haven't got my lunch yet, I still could probably manage one more task. So here we go. We're gonna try to get this sleeve here, brand new sleeve, right? You know, they're not expensive. These are like a couple bucks. And it also has a little opening too, so you can actually get prepared to put your bar in mirrors if needed to. So that was it, or just bar ends or whatever. But it's open there for you. See there. Sweet. All right, so let's see if we can actually get this guy in there. Here we go. Uh, there we go. Give me one second here. Let's look for that bar end. I can probably feel him somewhere around here. What's this guy in here? Oh, that's, oh, that's our mirror here. We're gonna install eventually. Uh, is he in here already or not? Huh, where did we misplace him? Or maybe he's in here with, no, this is just a mirror. So where's our throttle? These are just our switches. Might be in here. Maybe he is in here. We don't really know it. A whole bunch of stuff that we wanna maybe looking to getting done. So the one thing was the major thing was changing out that brake fluid and line. Ah, look at all the tie straps just going haywire. Pull them back up here. I know I always put things to protect it and then next thing I put it so well that I can't find it myself when I need it. I might have shoved it in here or maybe I put them in this guy here, this area. No, I see only the license plate so far. So that's where it's not really our tag is due, which we just paid it. We paid it late, unfortunately. I didn't realize it. It was due on the 24th. <laughs> and uh, I took care of it. Oh, man, just like two days. Or due on the 16th. I, it was due on the 14th. I did on the 16th. And unfortunately, now I have to pay the little... What do you call that? They call it when you don't pay on time. I don't think I would put it here, though. I know I didn't put it here. That's for sure. Oh, you know what I did? I probably put it in our little Gibby cover. That's me. Try and protect it, moved it all the way out of there. So let me go get it from the Gibby cover. Because I really want to go and try to see if we can do that trick that uh, APM was talking about. Taking out the sleeve. I know you could probably do it with a real air compressor. But I want to see if I could do it with the vacuum shop hose. Because I think it has enough air, but it's not like directed air. So let me go right back and uh, get that set up there. Give me one second here. Huh, actually, it's not in my Gibby case, so I have... Oh, you know what? There it is, probably right here. <laughs> there it is, look. Awesome. So we'll mark here where we got to take it off. And we'll try that trick that APM might say it might work. I don't know, because this is not really focused air, so I wouldn't blame it not to work right now. But it's worth the shot, right? Look at that. Look how, look how chewed up and ruined that is. I could probably take it to a tire shop and just deal with it. Um, but let's see if I can do it myself. Okay, so it's probably somewhere right here. This guy is like sort of parallel to the seven strut, just a little bit offset by a centimeter. So we're gonna replace him. You can see here. Or we can make this little right here. This mark right here needs to have the hole right there. How about we use this as an indicator? It's just some kind of reference, you know? See the little mark right there? We can use that as the throttle hole mark. 
So I'll just remember that next time. So let's let's get this guy pulled out. Let's see if we can pull him out easily or not. And then we'll try slip. It. Well, first of all, let's see the height of this bob. No, actually, it is probably almost the same. You actually have a little bit more here too as well. But the idea here is let's see how we pull this. Now, this only thing that's I didn't even lubricate this when I put it in there. I put by force. I hammered this guy. And you know me, I take a lot of time trying to figure something out. So it took me two hours, or not even that, maybe even two and a half or three hours to hammer this in. If I could have known about the air compressor or the lube, I would save so much heartache. Oh man, so let's do this. Let's see what APM says. So we're gonna try our best. See, you're supposed to get like air just like perfectly enough in there. But since we don't, we're gonna do our best. This is a lot of fourth air still. Not, not yeah, we don't have the leverage, unfortunately. I mean, I could put it in here. Whoa. I could put it in here, but there's more air going out a different direction. Yeah, it's a little harder. It might be working the bar, maybe. Yeah. So what I'll probably do is maybe take it to like a, a tire shop and they have little air compressors and we can probably like, you know, for them, it'll probably take them no more. They can clamp to somewhere, get the air presser, put it in, slide this guy in there and be done with less than two seconds probably. So that's what I'll probably do with this guy here. I tried to use my shop back, but it doesn't have the, the precise, you know, angle where I can just get into a little sleeve because you, you really want to get the air compressor or shoot air straight in here so it just kind of like fills this whole thing up with air and air you know it's it you can easily cut through air but air will help you you know the force of air can still help you lift things so shoot that through there and force it to lift things and then pull out like that so we should be good with that guy so that's it here we go so this is done with there all right, so we're almost there, you guys. This is it. I'm just going to go ahead and unwrap things out, take a break for today. Tomorrow we'll continue on our journey of trying to get the, the switch here to work. If we just touch the blue wire for whatever reason, we'll see. In fact, let me see. I'm always tempted to push myself, but I better stop while I'm sort of ahead. <laughs> All right, so let's squeeze this one more time. Just to, see, there we go. It's not the best. I mean, it's definitely not the best. So, but it's still there though. Still, there's a tightness to it. Just want to make sure now that we got everything vacuum out. I don't see any gliss or nothing like that. So we're good there. I won't put this all the way down yet until I'm, I'm sorry. I don't see any gliss or anything here. Or here, or here. <gasps> Do I? Oh, almost. It fooled me a little bit, little strands little strand of hair made it look like it was a gliss I'm like what so it's okay see we vacuum everything dry so there's no excuse for it to have any gliss anywhere so so far I'm not gonna put this down yet until I'm ready I mean until everything is finalized so we'll leave this kind of out of the way cool Michael from NCY store hope you guys enjoy the segment of how to you know struggle with your brake bleeding <laughs> uh, hopefully the right parts right